Hi everybody, today we're going to do a European art history review and so we're going to look at what all this means. So in the classical time period, the Greeks and Romans, the human body was on much display. Symmetry, domes, pillars are all important. So we have gods and goddesses, important leaders, nudity, togas, active bodies, no perspective though. That's going to come in the Renaissance. During the medieval we have this flat version and mostly about religious art and architecture, a glorifying of the next world. Stained glass windows, because a lot of people are illiterate, illuminated manus manuscripts, paintings, tapestries. And of course the subject is Christianity, people are fully clothed, it's two-dimensional, two motionless, no individualization. Here we see uh, Gothic architecture, we see the flying buttresses, the pillars, those things are all about getting to heaven. In the Renaissance, we see here uh, in Da Vinci's Last Supper and uh, Giotto's Last Supper, Fresco, um, we see more perspective. And in Leonardo da Vinci, of course, we see um, the biblical story in a little bit more emotion. During Raphael's School of Athens, you see a very uh, famous speak, uh, historical figures, including Socrates right here in the middle. Then Leonardo, again, Lady with the Ermine on wood. You know, uh, they're not just religious characters anymore that are being painted. Donatello, Donatello's brown sculpture and Michelangelo's David, depicting a biblical story, but depicting him in all of his humanity. Donatello's looking at after the battle that David has with Goliath, and Michelangelo's looking at before. The Renaissance we have here um, in San Pietro, the dome, the dome, the dome, the dome. The pillars, the pillars, the pillars. Northern Renaissance, here's Jan van Eyck and Durer. Notice these are just more um, regular images, capturing, more photographic. And of course, Jan van Eyck puts himself right in this mirror in his painting as well. The Renaissance is a classical revival with its own twist. It's Christian and secular. It has portraits, perspective, 3D, like a photograph. Drawings were done by scientific naturalism, like da Vinci's use with the uh, corpses <laughs> and natural light. Baroque is part of the Roman Catholic Church's revival of their intensity, their connection. And you have Bernini here, greatest example of Baroque, and Peter Paul Rubens, Virgin and Child and Throne with the Saints. And again, it's very dramatic, and it's part of the Counter-Reformation. So Baroque is religious, emotional, movement, Catholic Reformation, Counter-Reformation, whatever you want to call it, rekindling of the faith, and it is a propaganda that is used for secular patrons like Louis XIV in his Palace of Versailles. French classicism, Poisson, the rape of the Sabine woman, um, again, using a lot of architecture, the pillars, um, it is the official style of Louis XIV's court. It's a uh, Greco-Roman and Romance, but it has discipline, balance, and restraint. Rococo, light and fluffy. Uh, Fragonard's The Swing is definitely um, a great example. We looked at this in class. And this is a basilica in Bavaria. And this is architecture of a table. Rococo is a reaction against the much heavier French, French classicism ornate, sentimental, starry-eyed lovers, soft pastels, pastels, excuse me, decorative arts. Neoclassicism, uh, Jacques-Louis David shows us this in The Death of Socrates and The Lictors Bring to Brutus. And so for neoclassicism, you have order, reason, discipline, smooth brushstrokes, and spotlight writing. For romanticism, Joseph Turner is a very good example, and uh, Caspar David Friedrich. Again, capturing this idea of a connection to nature and the power of nature. Delacroix's Liberty Leading the People, Oil on Canvas, 1830. Again, we know that nationalism is brewing, and this is, of course, celebrating that. Romanticism is a reaction against the Enlightenment uh, lack of emotion. And its nature is peaceful or powerful, huge skies, man dwarfed by nature. Rural life is romanticized. Soft muted colors, other subjects are the macabre, like death, gothic, nationalism, heroes, family life, and religion. Realism 
is real. Here you got Millet and Kollowitz looking at just the everyday life, the, the capturing a moment in time. And notice the dates, 1830s to 1900. You know, it's the Industrial Revolution era. It's real. It's hardships of daily life. It's natural lighting. Impressionism, Monet, um, muted. Kind of like looking, but not really focusing. And look at the dates, 1870 to 1880s. It's going away from the realism. This is, of course, is Renoir. Right? Again, these two people here become very famous. Pizarro, the Boulevard de Montmartre, various times of day, various types of weather, just showing how it would be like to be in there. France again, study of light, impression, very obvious brushstrokes. Modern painting grew out of a revolt against French Impressionism, actually. Post-Impression and Expressionism, Van Gogh here, and uh, the wheat fields in Cyprus. You have Gauguin, uh, Tahitian women. And then you have Cezanne here, and Matisse. And if you look at post-Impressionism, it's uh, considered, they considered Impressionism too naturalistic, and they sought to explore emotion in painting, Van Gogh, and others. Cubism is abstract. Picasso is one of our best Cubist. Um, Cubists have more expression, extreme extraction. And there are some German Expressionists. Um, sorry, this keeps moving. Dada, Dada, you know. Uh, surrealism, 